This week on Talk of the Town, fall is in the air. To kick off fall break, we have a feature about Halloween barrels to boost your spooky spirit. We also highlight Tree Mountain's Farmer's Market, where it's all things pumpkins. Check out soccer and football highlights and interviews. Talk of the Town is made possible by supportive sponsors who love our community. Show your love by supporting them today. My name is Lainey Norman and I've just lived in Corinne my whole life. I used to actually work on this farm until I had to go and go to college and get my own real job. <laughs> I think I actually got the idea at a corn maze. They had just cut the tops off here and were using them as a fire pit and they just had like the basic like face cut into them. And I thought those were so cool. And I remember it was me and my dad and a couple of his friends that all went. And I was like, I, that looks so cool. Like, do you think I could make one? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I kind of just forgot about it until last year. I actually made my first two just to put up at my house. And then I actually left the tops on and then put a hole through the back. And so I could put orange Christmas lights through them. And just so they could be like glow every night and not just have to have like a fire in them. And yeah, last year I just made two of them. And then this year I was driving home from our property and I was like, dude, like, do you think anyone would buy them if I tried to sell them? And so I just put a post out and was like, hey, like I'll take a custom orders on like barrels, kind of like these ones. And I just posted the two that I had in front of my house. And then I actually, it like blew up. I had so many people text me and it, yeah, it just worked out really good. And I've had a ton of fun doing it. <laughs> I got those just like paint pens and then I just found, got on Pinterest and looked up Halloween faces to carve in pumpkins and I picked two that I like and I just drew them on. I was like, well now what? And he's like, well do you want to cut them out? I was like, yeah, sure. And so you can kind of maybe see it back there. The plasma cutter is what I use to like cut them all out and everything. And you just kind of, you have to hook up the ground to the barrel and then it just gives a super clean cut better than like a welding torch or anything like that. And yeah, I kind of just, he coached me through it and I figured it out. <laughs> Definitely think I want to keep doing it. It's like, I don't know, it, <laughs> it takes a lot. The first ones that I made are kind of, they've got some rough edges. We had to grind them down. But I think I've gotten a lot better, better steady hand, like you can kind of see in some of them. It's a little bit easier to cut out now. <laughs> But yeah, I definitely want to keep doing it. I've had people like my grandma will always comment on my Facebook post. She's like, oh my gosh, what about a snowman? Or like, what about this? What about that? And I've had my dad and he's like, you need to start cutting out like football teams and stuff, like all sorts of stuff. You could do anything. And so, yeah, I definitely want to keep doing them. I think they're a ton of fun. I love Halloween. I don't know why. It's one of my favorites. I love going to the haunted houses, the corn mazes, which, you know, is where I got the idea. Um, I think I, yeah, I just love it. It's something that my family would do. I remember being like younger and I would like beg my dad. I was like, can we please go to a corn maze? Like, please, I just want to go. And yeah, Halloween's just always been one of my favorites. And then it's really cool to make them just cause like they're, you know, they're big. <laughs> they're a fun little Halloween decoration. You don't have to do anything careful to store them. Like mine sat behind our shed all this from this last year. And I just had to spray them off with the hose and they're fine. Like they don't, yeah, no maintenance at all. <laughs> Um, but it's really cool to do them. Like I've delivered some clear up to Smithfield. I've got some going clear down to Ogden. It's just really cool to see where they all have gone and like how many people are like interested in something like this. I think if someone messaged me and was like, hey, can you do this? I'd probably be like, yeah. Like I actually have one that I'm going to make today and it's going to the local bar and grill. So I'm going to write Mims across it and like just in some like scary font or whatever and put some designs around it and then that'll be out on the main road so I think that's super cool too. Price range it kind of just varies on design and everything. I've sold some for 60, I've sold some for 150. Um, ways to get in contact with me are probably my Facebook, Instagram which are both I'm pretty sure just Lady Norman. <laughs> not, yeah, not too hard to get a hold. The Tree Mountain Farmers Market Series wrapped up for 2024 with six events being held May through October. There were nearly 40 vendors at each event and plenty of fun for all to enjoy. This month's theme was all about pumpkins and spooky things. Here's a recap of the day and we'll see you all next year at the Farmer's Market.
Harbor High School's Athlete of the Week is brought to you by Pizza Plus. Congrats to these athletes for their efforts on and off the field. Far side now back into the middle here with Addie Allen. Allen with a good pass up to win. There's a shot and a first goal there in this one. Lexi Wynn trying to find a step. Good move. There's a shot. Good block here by Riaz. Your side, Crowther collects. On a good move, freezer up. Here's a. What does he mean? Back here for Bear River. The pass splits the defense. Here's a shot. Good block here by Esquivel. Collection gets it back. From the left leg gets it a go. Right here and a good pass. With the quickness. Here's Roberts to clear this one out. Anderson back to the sideline and across it inside. Wilkinson breaks it up. Abadade's high kick is up and Robinson brings it in. Good pass gets through one defender and Shelby Wilkinson slows it down. Let's see, trying to get up to it. Up makes the defender, but Hadley Kerrigan quickly. Defense retreats back here for the Logan Grizzlies. Tied in, and Riaz with a stop. Ken Running to Kennington, able to get past her. Splits the defense. Looks inside here to the middle. Here's Lexi Wynn with a shot and a goal to take the lead back. Throwing back into Allen. Grizzly sends this one up, and bouncing around. Set up here for Bear River. Trying to extend the lead. This one up and high. There's another goal for Bear River to get the cushion with one and a half. The left they go. Emery Crowther goes down injured, comes back in and gets a goal. So I know you were really wanting to end on region with a win. You guys did that tonight. I'm sure it was more of a back and forth battle than you expected. Take us through some of the emotions and intensity of today. A lot of highs and a lot of some some nervous stomachs out there after they scored those two goals. Um, I am so appreciative of how the girls continue to battle through even after we got scored on twice. Um, those are Logan's first two goals of the season and coming off of a loss from Skyview after tying them 2-2 in double overtime. There's a lot of emotions that come with that score, I think, from this season. And I just appreciate the girls keeping level heads and continuing to play our game. And so on defense, your defense as a whole was really great. We noticed Livia Meads was out. So tell us about her and then how they stepped up in her absence. Yeah, so Liv's luckily on a college trip um, looking at Milliken in Illinois. So, you know, looking forward to what she has after graduation. So, yeah, Shelby and Bailey stepped up in that center back position. Um, and I think they absolutely killed it. And then um, a couple of people on the outs out at outside back stepping up for us too. It lives such a strong point for us, but I was really proud of our girls to be able to maintain that control in the back line in her absence. And really, it could have been a much different game had they not played as hard as they did because Logan was hungry to get their first win of the season. Um, who were, I know you had mentioned the girls, but what were some of the things they did in order to make sure it wasn't a closer game? I think just continuing to play our game, even when times got frustrating. Um, there were some times in Green Canyon where we, we were getting frustrated at each other and starting to chip at each other. And what they were able to do today was keep their level heads and not take frustrations out on each other. Um, and I think that was ultimately our success and being able to continue to connect the way that we were with our passes and runs um, and just not getting frantic in our play when we were tied up. And then tell us on offense, you had two from Lexi today and then one from Crowther. The assists were great too. Tell us a little bit about your offense. Yeah, our offense is so much more creative this year than it has been in the past, and we definitely saw it this game. Um, you know, the through balls, the cutting across the midfield, the shots, Emery's sinking one off a header on the corner. Like, we just have some good offensive players that know how to put the ball in the back of the net when we get those opportunities to do so. Um, so I'm just proud of them for doing their jobs today. And so how do you guys plan to continue this momentum headed into the playoffs and what are we kind of hoping for there? I'm hoping to keep this positive energy going and just these girls continuing to know that they can be successful when they put a full game together. Um, again, just keeping the love for the game alive and 
and those hard feelings that seniors have that eventually their senior season is going to end and just playing all out games from here on out. Just tell me a little bit about how that felt on defense today because Logan came at you guys hard. They were hungry for their first win. What did you guys do as a defensive unit to be able to uh, keep it to the score it was? Uh, it was definitely scary. We're missing one of our like top defenders right now. She's out of college and so it was kind of hard to adapt to it. But I think we, we talked a lot before the game and just recovering each other helped really well. So. And so you guys had some great saves. You had some key moments where you stopped what could have been potentially more scores. How does that feel to have such a good game? Senior year, last regular season game. What's that feel like for you? Felt so good. It definitely was a little scary at sometimes, but it felt so good to finally pull off the win. So. Well, you're going to be our defensive player of the game, and that grill gift card is for you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Lexi, exciting game for you tonight. You started off the scoring with your first goal. Beautiful play by, I think it was Alan who sent that to you. Just tell me kind of what's going through your head with that first goal. Um, I sit and tell myself, don't miss, don't miss. <laughs> and I close my eyes and kick it. And then it's a beautiful goal, goal that goes in. What was the excitement there here on your last region game? I was really excited because I haven't scored a region game yet this season. So I was excited. Well, not only do you score one, but you score another one. After you get a tie, tie, a tie game, it's close. You get that one. How did that feel to be able to get that in to kind of know that you guys probably aren't going to have to push it into overtime? It felt so good, but I was super stressed out because they can come back right quick. So when Emery got this other goal after, it felt really good. And so how do you guys plan to continue this excitement and energy into playoffs? Um, we're just going to party. We get three pizza parties from all our headers, so we're just going to get huge next week and go play. <laughs> Well, you're going to be our offensive grill player of the game, so that's for you. Thank you so much. Yep, good luck. Thanks. All right, Crowler. So you All get right. basically the uh, goal to seal the win. What did that feel like for you? I mean, the ball came perfectly. JJ had a massive. If you see her, she screamed the whole defender. And I just, I was like, I got to jump. So then I jumped and I headed it. And it felet amazing to have all my teammates around me. And what's that feel like to be able to get that win for your seniors? I love my seniors so much. It means the world that I could get them a win that they'll never forget. And so we've talked to the other girls about what's the game plan to get ready for playoffs and what are you guys hoping there? Um, we're hoping to get some wins. I mean, my CS in the state championship, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, we're going to work as hard as we possibly can and we're going to hope we get some wins along the way and build some great memories. Jones and Barron's back with them. It'll be a... Oh, it's a Wildcat. Barron's getting the snap. Excuse me, going far side. Gets the Frank May Skidoo first down to start us off. One play. Flowers in punt formation. So a three and out here for Block. block. Punt is blocked by... Throw across the middle of the field. Completed here to take him. Stevens goes in motion. Tire looking his way. Two guys in there. Jones almost could have caught that one too, but we got a touchdown. Time you got Jones kind of as a tight end. Going to Bringer for the pylon. That's a catch. Give it. He says wants that one back. Here's a pick six here for Bear River. Glade and Barron's down the sideline. There's your new course deal. And Barron's turning it in to six here for Bear River. Pass interception for a touchdown. Westfield goes back to that now route that we talked about when they've been going down to Boston. It'll be interesting to see here. Uh, he's going to get it. Killed it the one or two, one and a half maybe. On oh, far side, good tackle. Get for a first down now after the penalty. And not here to Barron's, yes. Able to spin free. Making two guys miss. A lot more pressure if they do here. I can cause a lot of issues. And there's another new course deal this time. Quentin Murray. He's going to get a little from what they do here. I can cause a lot of issues. And there's another new course deal this time. Quentin Murray. He's going to get a little from months at the top. Here's your quick slam. Uh, chip shot for Stone. With the little breeze that you got. Fire, time, back to pass. Going for Breger, and that's He's a catch. Got it. That's great. Different animal. Good screen here. Adam Stevens. One guy to beat. He'll drag him down. No, not before he gets a Frank Mays. Can do first down and inside. 
a long horn, but that's just, it's being in game shape, it's just not quite the same. And they left Jones wide open. He's making a pay for the last race could do first. Kind of open for you here. Tyer steps up, finds a breaker wide open. Another Frank Mace could do first down as he just gets shy of the we just saw. Tyre with a low snap, give it to Jones, and he powers through for a touchdown. There's Hunt back, and everybody coming after. Take the hand, Austin. We get out here to catch Avery. He's trying to make one guy miss. Good move, frees him up to the edge. Frank Mace could do first. Down. Football game just different, different animal. Good screen here. Adam Stevens, one guy to beat. He'll drag him down, no, not before he gets a Frank Mace Kadoo first down and inside. Ball's gonna get fumbled here by Avery. Throw it over to Prager, and he's got a Frank Mace Kadoo first down. Just Ball's gonna get fumbled here by Avery. Throw it over to Prager, and he's got a Frank Mace Kadoo first down. Just Come on to the ball, keep the clock moving. Now a pass play, looking in zone, and there it is. Eli Prager. Zero. As the fan of the game, and is being presented Tires by Winston back, and Phil looks the pass, far the side. Oh, and a good catch. Down the sideline, Tatum Stevens. Jukes back inside, and a touchdown. Tire still in the back, Bill looks the pass, far side. And a good catch. Down the sideline, Tatum Stevens. Jukes back inside and a touchdown. Abbott's going to go down, a sack here for. In Utah field. Um, it's, it's a good one. Uh, our, our kids played confident tonight. I, I really was proud of how everybody kind of put in, um, you know, their two cents with their job, and they, they uh, all pitched in at some point. And, um, you know, a lot of people had a great game tonight and just proud of all the kids. That's great plays. Tatum had some great plays. Gladen, you know, the first time fully back, um, was great at running back for us. Um, and then the offensive line obviously has to get some credit there. And, and our quarterback, as always, um, directing the show. So, but, uh, you know, both offense and defense had a great night off. Um, looking at the scoreboard and looking at how they played. So. I, I told our kids we need to be confident um, and just do our assignments and do our job and um, not be world beaters. And they did that. They came out. Um, they were confident in their abilities. and. Play, and so I'm just proud that they were able to do that and get the job done. Okay, so I'm here with Quade Murray, our defensive player of the game. Here's this for you. Okay, so you had an insane interception right there when they were threatening our line. How did that feel and what was going through your head? You know, just trying to get the ball back to the offense, let them give them an opportunity, and just be an athlete, you know? And you've been a pretty solid player for our defense all year. You've been showing up and showing out. How do you feel like this is going to affect, like this game is going to affect the rest of our region play? I think it's going to be we got a, We got a head steam going into next week against Green Canyon. We, we should be able to win them, and hopefully it goes good. Tune in next week to see what other spooky things are on the docket for Talk of the Town.